When it comes to multiplayer shooters, there are basically two kinds. You got your running gun games like Halo and Fortnite, where action is the focus. Then you have games like Counter-Strike, which are slower, more tactical, and far more deadly. But despite its popularity, Counter-Strike didn't create the genre of tactical shooters. Instead, the genre's origins lie in another popular series, Rainbow Six. It was the first major franchise to bear novelist Tom Clancy's name, and through nearly two and a half decades has helped to grow the genre it created. Today, Rainbow Six Siege is one of the most popular multiplayer shooters around, but it took a lot of time and effort for the franchise to reach that point. Today on Game Files, we're going to chart the journey of Rainbow Six from its origins in the 90s to the success of Rainbow Six Siege. And to do that, we have to go back to where it all began, with a game about submarines. In the 90s, Tom Clancy had been working on a game called Tom Clancy's SSN that was about submarine warfare in the South China Sea. It took six years for the game to be made, and after it was released, Clancy partnered with developer Virtus Corporation to launch a new studio called Red Storm Entertainment. Their first project? An online multiplayer shooter that would come to be called Rainbow Six. It was conceived as a tactical hostage rescue game, where every bullet was deadly and where the goal was rescuing hostages. Multiplayer featured two teams competing against each other to complete objectives. But much like the campaign, one or two bullets was all it took to kill a person. When it was released in 1998, Rainbow Six quickly sold 200,000 copies, enough to spark ports to the PlayStation 1 and an expansion pack a year later. It was the first shooter to emphasize a slower play style, encouraging players to take their time and make each shot count. A thriving multiplayer community grew around the game, even if the servers weren't in the best condition. Man down, man down. The first Rainbow Six sold well for its era, proving to be a popular game. And soon enough, sequels and expansion packs followed. The same year Red Storm released an expansion for the original game, the company released a sequel called Rogue Spear. Being only a year after the release of the first Rainbow Six, it offered several straightforward improvements and more of the same gameplay that made the first popular. However, instead of releasing one expansion pack, Red Storm would go on to make three for the game, extending the game's lifespan well into the new millennium. Around this time, Ubisoft acquired Red Storm, who began work on what would become Rainbow Six 3. In between Rogue Spear and 3, a little game called Counter-Strike would release that would build upon the tactical shooting that made Rainbow Six stand out in the first place. As a result, 3 was a catch-up game for Red Storm, who incorporated many Counter-Strike features into the franchise for the first time. The most obvious of which was that you could now see your gun in first person. More importantly, Rainbow Six 3 proved to be a hit with sixth generation console players. Xbox players particularly liked the game, as they were taking advantage of the new and popular Xbox Live. That, in turn, caused the Xbox to get its own exclusive sequel to Rainbow Six 3, called Black Arrow in 2004. But it wasn't until the next console generation that Rainbow Six would grow in a big way thanks to the release of Rainbow Six Vegas and Rainbow Six Vegas 2 in 2006 and 2008. Numerous gameplay improvements, including the ability to shoot around cover, repel down buildings, and regenerating health, helped Rainbow Six explode in popularity. So how did Ubisoft take advantage of the growth in the series? By not releasing another game in the franchise for seven years. Not that they didn't try. Ubisoft spent years developing a game called Rainbow Six Patriots, but the project was hampered by staff departures and multiple leaks. Fortunately, Ubisoft repurposed much of what had been developed for Patriots into something new. Instead of focusing on single player, the next Rainbow Six game would be multiplayer only. And despite optimism, I don't think anyone at Ubisoft expected the next game to be as big of a hit as it ended up being. Rainbow Six Siege was released in 2015, and at first, it sold poorly. The class-based progression system, with different characters having different equipment and abilities, was poorly received to start. But Ubisoft decided to turn the game into a games-as-a-service model, slowly patching and releasing free updates for the game over time. Word of mouth caused players to flock to the game, and by 2019, it was one of the most popular games Ubisoft had ever released. It had 45 million registered players that year, a thriving esports scene, 
and most importantly, plenty of love from fans and critics. And that popularity won't be going away anytime soon. A spin-off of Siege called Quarantine will focus on co-op gameplay, as players fight a techno zombie plague and will be released sometime in the next year. Siege itself is continuing to grow. Free DLC is being released at a steady pace, and the game continues to attract new players. Rainbow Six has, thanks to hard work over the decades, become one of Ubisoft's biggest properties. Not too bad for a game that started as a Tom Clancy tie-in.